Hi there, everyone. I'm Ali, product manager at TikTok. We're really happy to have you here with us for a cool session on making awesome rendering with the graph feature in Effect House. In today's session, we're lucky to have our amazing interactive engineer, Rustin, joining us. He's here to share some cool tips and tricks on how to get started with the material editor. During this session, we'll share some handy tips and secrets on using the material editor. And guess what? We've got a surprise to show you at the end. So don't go anywhere, stick around, because we're about to unveil a wonderful new feature that we're super duper excited about. Stay tuned. Before we dive into the exciting world of graphs, let's take a moment to unravel the mystery. So Rustin, please say hi and let us know what on earth is this material editor all about? And how in the name of all things digital can transform the visual into stunning masterpieces? Hey there. I'm Rustin, your friendly shader wizard, and today we're diving deep into the world of custom materials and shader customization. The material editor is a crucial tool in the world of effect creation. It allows users to specify the appearance of each pixel on the screen, effectively defining how objects should look. To achieve this, the material editor generates a program known as a shader. Shaders play a vital role in instructing the GPU on how to render visuals accurately. For instance, consider a scenario where you have an effect featuring water. To create realistic water effects, shaders are employed. With the aid of shaders, you can control factors such as the water's color, foam shape, and how its vertices should be positioned to simulate movements like waves. Mm, I have a question here. Why would a creator want to make an effect with a shader in general and not use textures? Great question. Shaders are essential for creating real-time visual effects. Textures, on the other hand, are static images that can be mapped onto 3D objects. Shaders allow you to create dynamic, interactive effects that respond to user input, changing effect conditions, or other factors in real time. For instance, with shaders, you have the power to transform the appearance of water. You can make it resemble a turbulent, stormy ocean, or transition it into calm, shallow water, all in real time, thanks to shaders. When you create a shader, you can define parameters that allow you to dynamically adjust and alter the appearance of the water or any shader you happen to be working on. Mm, another question. So why do our creators want to learn about shader and how to use them? High quality effects are beloved and often popular on TikTok. So the higher the quality of your effect, the better positioned it is to resonate with a broader audience. Brands will also often look to create effects that are more polished and customized. So by mastering Material Editor, creators can better position themselves to work with brands. Wow. That is amazing. So how shaders work and how to create one? Typically, shaders are written using code, which can be a complex task for those unfamiliar with programming. However, Material Editor simplifies this process significantly. Instead of writing lines of code, users work within a graph framework, where they connect nodes to define the shader's behavior. The real advantage here is the instant feedback provided by Material Editor, allowing users to see the visual results of their changes without any coding hassle. This makes shader creation accessible and fun for both newcomers and experienced effect creators. With Effect House and Material Editor, you can easily create dynamic effects that inspire trends on TikTok. I know this might be a little bit complicated, but we're going to keep it fun and engaging, so don't worry if you're new to this. That's right, Rustin. Learning about shaders doesn't have to be boring. So let's get started, shall we? Absolutely, Ellie. To kick things off, we're going to create our very own custom material to make everything look awesome. Custom materials are like our artist's palette, and they contain the special recipe, the shader. We can customize the shader using the material editor. So how do we create one of these custom materials? Great question, Ellie. To create a custom material, you'll want to head over to the Assets panel. There's a little plus icon. Click on it and search for Custom Material. When you find it, select Empty Material. As soon as you click on it, a new panel called Material Editor appears in the effect house. This is where the real fun begins. You can create graphs, connect them together, and cook up some stunning visuals that will blow your mind. That sounds great. But here's a question for you. How can we actually see what these custom materials look like in action? We can apply these custom materials to all sorts of objects, whether they're 3D or 2D. Today, for our session, I'm going to apply the material to a screen image object so we can get a better view. But remember, all the stuff I'm about to share works for both 2D and 3D objects. To create a screen image, head over to the Hierarchy panel. You'll spot a Add Object button. Click on it and search for Screen Image. 
Now, just drag and drop that newly created custom material onto your screen image. Your shader is now being rendered right there on the image component. So what's next? How can we start customizing our shader and understanding how it works? When you open up the material editor, you'll notice a shader node waiting for you. Traditionally, in the world of graphics programming, there are two smaller programs called the fragment shader and the vertex shader. Think of the fragment shader as the artist who decides the color of each pixel on your screen, and the vertex shader as the architect who determines where each vertex of a mesh should be placed in 3D space. Take a closer look at the shader node. You'll see it has four inputs. The very first one is fragment input, which is responsible for color, and the rest are vertex inputs, responsible for vertex positions and directions. Let's dive into a super simple task, changing colors. To do that, just click on the color and change it. Watch as the image's color changes in real time. If you've ever looked at other materials, you might have noticed they have some properties exposed for users to customize. Well, guess what? We can do the same thing using the material editor. To make this happen, we need to create variables for each property we want to customize. So let's empower our users with customization superpowers. To create these customizable parameters, click on the hamburger menu button in the material editor panel. You'll see a small side panel pop up. Here's where you define a variable. Click on the plus button and you'll see a list of properties you can create. Since we want to customize the color, we'll select color. Now it's time to give our parameter a name. In this case, we'll call it base color. Always remember to name your parameters, folks. Trust me, things can get messy real fast and you don't want to lose track of what each parameter is responsible for. Now that we've got our color parameter all set up, let's bring it into the graph section. Just click on the small circle button and you'll see a brown node pop up in the graph section. Quick tip, my fellow creators. All nodes colored brown are the parameters defined by users. These parameters can be customized using the inspector panel without modifying the logic of our shader. Fantastic, folks. We've successfully created a parameter that allows us to customize the color of our shader in real time. This is really cool, Rustin. But I've got a challenge for you now. I'm a big fan of gradients in my work. They add that extra rooms to my effects. Can we create a gradient using the material editor? What node should we use for that? Creating gradients is a breeze. But before we jump into it, let's chat briefly about coordinates. The material editor gives us two default coordinates to work with, texture coord and screen coord. The texture coord is all about how each texture is mapped to 2D or 3D objects. These coordinates are often generated by 3D tools, but you can make modifications to them right here in the effect house. The screen coord is all about how textures are mapped based on the screen's height and width. Rustin, can you show us how these coordinates work in practice? Absolutely, Ellie. To visualize this, let's create a texture coord node. To do that, right click on the graph section, select add node, and search for texture cord. Select it. Now, you'll notice that the outputs of the texture cord are vector two, which means they have both X and Y values. Click on the UV output of the texture cord and connect it to the color input of the shader node. Now you'll see some green and red colors on the image. Rustin, I'm curious, why are we seeing this mango color? Great question, Ellie. As I mentioned earlier, these coordinates come in a vector two format, which means they have both X and Y values. The reason we're seeing mango colors is that the X coordinate is now represented as red and the Y coordinate is represented as green. Since it's vector two, we don't have a blue component, which is why you're not seeing any blue colors. To view these coordinates separately, you can use the split node. Right click in the graph section again, select add node and search for split. When you connect the output of the texture cord to the split node, you'll see two output options. One outputs the X coordinate and the other outputs the Y coordinate. Connect the first one to the main shader and you'll see a gradient appear on the screen. Wow, this is fascinating. So why are we seeing this black and white colors? Great question. Our texture coordinates range from zero to one. In shader language, zero represents black and one represents white. This means that our values are increasing from zero to one as we move across the mesh. Got it. So if we were to connect the second output of the split node to the main shader, it will create a gradient from top to bottom since it's the Y coordinate, correct? You're absolutely right, Ellie. Connecting the second output of the split node to the main shader would indeed create a gradient from top to bottom as it controls the Y coordinate. Great observation. Now that we have our gradient, how can I make it the colors that I want? To customize the colors of your gradient, you need to tell the shader how to interpolate between black and white to achieve the desired colors. And guess what? We have just the node for that. 
It's called the LERP node. This node allows us to interpolate between two values based on a provided factor, which in our case will be the output of the split node. To create the LERP node, you already know the drill, right-click in the graph section and search for the LERP node. Now, check out the LERP node. It's got three inputs. The first two inputs are the colors you want to interpolate between, and the last one is the output of the split node. Connect the output of the split node to the weight input of the LERP node, and then connect the output of the LERP node to the main shader node. Hold on a sec, Rosting. Why is everything black now? Do we break anything? Don't worry, Ellie. We're just getting started. The reason it's black is that we're currently interpolating between zero and zero. To fix this, we need to connect the colors we want to interpolate between to the first two inputs of the LERP node. We already have one color node. Let's quickly create one more and connect both of them to the LERP node. Now you'll see it's all white, but here's the magic trick. Select your material, look at the inspector panel, and you'll find two color options provided. Change these two colors to your heart's content, and voila you've got yourself a custom color gradient. This is amazing. I've heard that there's a lot of math behind the shaders. Can you create an example using math to customize our gradient? Absolutely, Ellie. Math is the secret sauce behind many shaders, and it can give you incredible control over your visuals. Let's start by using math to change the position of our gradient. So if we switch our gradient colors back to black and white, we know that black represents zero and white represents one. Essentially, we're interpolating between zero and one. If we want to move our gradient, we can simply add or subtract a number from our factor value. Let's put this into action. Click on the graph and add an add node. Connect the output of the split node to the add node, and then connect the output of the add node to the lerp node. Now we have the ability to add any value to our texture coordinates x channel. To add a number, we'll create a new variable. But this time, our variable type will be float because we want to modify a number instead of changing color. Let's call this float position and connect it to the other end of the add node. In the inspector panel, if I change the value of position, you can see that the placement of our gradient is now moving. For example, if we put negative one, you'll see all white. One will be all black and zero will be half white and half black. Quick tip here, you can create a slider for this value by selecting the variable and then enabling enable min and enable max. Now you can set min to negative one and max to one giving you a nice slider control for easy adjustments. This is seriously cool. I can see how using math can make creating effects so much more flexible and fun. Thanks for showing us this awesome trick. I've learned so much, but is it possible to blend between two textures instead of two colors? Absolutely, Ellie. That's a great idea. To blend between two textures, we need to create two texture 2D variables instead of colors. These texture 2D variables are shader inputs where users can provide any texture they want to use. So let's create two texture 2D variables here. I'll call one text A and the other one text B. Now let's bring them into the graph. But as you can see, if I try to connect the texture 2D inputs directly to the LERP node, it won't work. Hmm, why not? This is getting a little bit complicated. Not to worry. In the shader world, for the GPU to understand a texture, you need to translate the texture into GPU language. This process is called sampling. Fortunately, we have a node for that called Sample Texture 2D. This node takes two inputs. One is, of course, the Texture 2D, and the second is the UV coordinate to sample the texture at. Ah, I see. Please continue, Rusting. Let's create a Sample Texture 2D node and connect our Texture 2D input to it. For the UV, we simply connect our Texture Chord node to it. We need to repeat the same process for our Text B as well. Now that we've sampled both textures, we can connect the outputs of the samples to our LERP node. All you see is a checker box, which is the default texture in the effect house. But to change that, select the shader and set a texture for both properties, and boom, we've created a blend between two textures. This is super cool. Is it possible to blend in ways other than gradient? Absolutely, Ellie. As long as you provide a value to the weight input, it'll blend the textures the way you want. As an example, I can delete the split node and instead use a noise node. You can see that our textures are blending together based on the black and white colors of the noise. You can use the math I showed you earlier to create your own amazing blending shaders and achieve various effects. Thank you so much, Rustin, for showing us how shaders work. How can I further improve my knowledge of material editor and shaders? To further improve your knowledge, be sure to check out our YouTube channel. 
will have plenty of streams about Material Editor and shaders. Additionally, explore the asset library and the templates because they come with lots of amazing examples that you can learn from. I can show you some of the cool stuff I've created using Material Editor. Ellie, I've had a blast showing you these Material Editor examples, but now I can't wait to see what you and the team have been secretly crafting. Thank you, Rustin. We've been pouring our hearts and souls into this project, and the time has come to share it with all of you. Let's dive right in and unveil our exciting new project. VFX Editor is our new graph-based visual effects engine within Effect House. With VFX Editor, you can now create a wide range of visual effects, from fireworks to confetti, rain to fire, and any other particle that your creative mind can think of. Imagine the VFX Editor as a supercharged particle system. With the VFX Editor, you can do cooler things than before, from crafting mind-blowing simulations to grooving with procedural animations and so much more. With these tools, you can make awesome visual effects, just like in big movies. Visual effects play a crucial role in enhancing the atmosphere and storytelling of your effects. They bring imagined world to life with captivating details that truly immerse your users in the effects. Effect House is pushing the boundaries of real-time graphics, and tools like VFX Editor are a testament to that. Visual effects, once only accessible to Hollywood blockbusters, can now be achieved right here in Effect House. VFX Editor operates much like the Material Editor, allowing you to create effects by combining nodes. If you're already comfortable with Material Editor, you'll find many similarities here. And if you're new to it, don't worry. VFX Editor is a powerful tool with a whole set of capabilities to take your effects creation to the next level. Amazing! When can we expect this tool to be released? We're happy to announce that we'll be launching a beta for VFX Editor early next year. Keep an eye out for an email after the conference with a link to sign up for this beta program if you'd like to be the first to try out the new tools. Thank you all for joining us today on this exciting journey through Effect House, Material Editor, and the incredible world of VFX Editor. It's been an absolute blast sharing our knowledge and showcasing the limitless possibilities that await you in the world of real-time graphics. And a big shout out to our talented team who's been working tirelessly behind the scenes to bring these amazing tools to life. We can't wait to see what you all create with them. Remember, the Effect House community is all about creativity, innovation, and collaboration. We encourage you to dive in, explore, and push the boundaries of what's possible in real-time graphics. And don't forget to stay tuned for more updates, tutorials, and live streams on our YouTube channel, where we'll continue to share insights and tips to help you on your journey. That's right, Ellie. We're here to support you every step of the way. So keep creating, keep innovating, and most importantly, have fun on your adventures in Effect House. Thank you all for being a part of this amazing community. We can't wait to see the incredible effects you create with Effect House. Material Editor and VFX Editor. Until next time, stay creative and keep those pixels dancing. Bye everyone, see you in the next session.